guys, in this video we're going to start the urinary system, okay? And we're going to start off with the anatomy of the kidney. So where does the kidney lie within the body? That's a good question. Let's bring it over here. Okay. So we have the kidneys right here, okay? So see that little guy right there? Okay. We have the kidneys, which lie, that one's cut open. Oops. They're called retroperitoneal organs, okay? So there are the kidneys right there, retroperitoneal organs. Okay, guys, so the specific anatomy of the kidney, you have an excellent model right here. Pop that guy back in, okay? So what's happening here in this model is we have a kidney right here, and they actually have the approximations right here. This is about three times the size of a normal kidney, okay? Then they blow up a specific portion of it, okay? 120 times the size of a normal kidney right there. And then what do we do? We do 700 times that size to see a very specific part we'll talk about in a second. So the kidneys, okay? So we have a large kidney right here, three times the normal size. We'll start off with the layers of the kidney. So the layers of the kidney, we have this outermost layer right here, this brown adipose tissue. That's the fibrous or renal capsule. Fibrous or renal capsule. Next layer in is the renal cortex. Renal cortex. And then you see all these triangle looking structures right here? Those are covering the renal medulla layer. So from inside to out, renal medulla, renal cortex and the outermost renal capsule or fibrous capsule, okay? Then we have some structures we need to know within, okay? Renal hilum is a region coming in and out, so renal hilum is really this whole region right here where we have a structure coming in and out called the ureter, the ureter. This is the ureter coming out, and our renal artery and vein coming in and out, so all this stuff is the renal hilum. That's that region, renal hilum. These spaces right in here, okay, are known as the these spaces right in here. Let's get closer up. Spaces are the renal sinuses. They're in between the minor calyces, which we'll talk about in a second, and I'll recover where the renal sinuses are. They're either filled with vessels or with fat. So this model has vessels covering it. Those triangular-like structures, triangular-like structures, these are all renal pyramids, renal pyramids, okay, renal pyramids, and the tips of the renal pyramids where it gets lighter, so you see it getting discolored towards the bottom, those are all renal papilla. So the tips or the edges of the renal pyramids are the renal papilla feeding into the minor calyx, okay. Renal columns are the next structure, so renal columns, you see a good one right here, Renal columns are these pieces of tissue separating out each pyramid from each other. So really, really large renal um, column on the bottom there. Really large renal column separating out this pyramid from this pyramid. Okay. Renal lobe is a funky um, structure. It's a structure um, or region used to describe one pyramid plus half of the column on either side. So one pyramid, half the column, that is a renal lobe. <laughs> okay, it's kind of a weird one. So those renal papilla touching the minor calyx. So each renal papilla gets its own um, minor calyx. So all of these individual structures are minor calyces or minor calyx. Where two or more merge, they form into a major calyx. Okay, so major calyx right there, major calyx right here, where two or, two or more are forming it. Then where all the calyces merge, it forms the renal pelvis. And that's the last place it sits before it actually dumps down into the ureter. Okay, once that urine is formed completely, it's going to leave through the ureter. Okay. All right, guys, in this section, we're going to cover elimination. So we're going to start with that ureter we covered last time. Okay, so remember that ureter was coming out of the kidney right there. So where does that ureter go? Good question. Come on, 
back over here to explain. So you have the ureters, which you can see leaving the kidneys. Let's stabilize this. The ureter is leaving the kidney right there, going towards the bladder. Okay, so the ureters are going to insert into the back of the bladder there, and now we're going to cover the specific um, structures within the bladder and surrounding the bladder. So, urinary bladder is a term that you need to know. So here's an isolated urinary bladder, specifically a male bladder because you see the prostate at the bottom. So within the urinary bladder, they have these folds called rugae. So that's why it's very important to put rugae of urinary bladder, because if you remember from digestive, we had rugae of the stomach. So detrusor muscle is this layer on the outside of the bladder right there. So you see that? That is the detrusor muscle surrounding the outside of the bladder, detrusor muscle. Urethral openings, okay? So you'll see... Urethral openings right there. You see this little triangle structure right there? Okay, it has an opening on either side of that triangle. Those are the urethral openings. Urethral openings. Okay, that um, triangular smooth muscle is the, or that triangular muscle is the trigone. Trigone. Okay, triangular muscle is the trigone. The neck of the urinary bladder is where it's coming to an end of the trigone right here. So neck of the urinary bladder coming to an end right here. So it's that tip of the triangle, neck of the urinary bladder. Internal urethral sphincter, okay, is um, where this part of the um, detrusor muscle is touching the bladder right there. So that's the internal urethral sphincter. And we can see internal urethral sphincter versus external urethral sphincter a little bit better on the models. So you'll see on this other model. So this other model, you can see it coming out. The internal urethral sphincter would be up here where that muscle is touching, detrusor muscle is touching the edge of the bladder. Then down here, you can see the external urethral sphincter. You see these little um, cusps right here. That's the external urethral sphincter lying within this horizontal muscle called the urogenital diaphragm. Urogenital diaphragm, okay? And the urethra is just simply running from here all the way out, okay? That's the urethra running from the bladder to the opening to the outside world. And the opening to the outside world is the external urethral orifice. Doesn't matter if you're male or female. Okay, so you see a female bladder right here with the urethra running to the outside, and that's still external urethral orifice for the female. Now, the external urethral orifice for males is used for both reproductive purposes and urinary purposes. Okay, and so we break the urethra up into three regions. So it has a prostatic urethra running through that purple prostate, prostatic urethra. The smallest of them is just running through that urogenital diaphragm. So this is going to be the membranous urethra. Very, very tiny, membranous urethra. Then running through the penis is the spongy or penile urethra. And that's it for this section. So. Okay, guys, in this section, we're going to go back to this kidney model right here and cover the blood supply of the kidneys. Okay. So starting off with arteries, or the oxygenated blood coming in, okay? We start off with the renal artery, which is coming in right here. Once that renal artery splits, it splits into segmental arteries, which run until they hit the renal columns. So remember, renal columns were separating out the pyramids from each other. So when it runs through the renal column, it's known as interlobar artery. So it goes renal artery, Segmental artery, and you see it split again into interlobar arteries running up the columns. Then it curves over the top of the pyramids. So when it curves, oops, when it's curving over the top of the pyramid, that is the arcuate artery. So it's arcing over the top of the pyramid, the arcuate, arcuate arteries. Then once those break off and branch up into the renal cortex, those are called 
cortical radiate arteries. You can see them filling the entire renal cortex. Cortical radiate arteries. Then we get really, really teeny tiny, okay? So we're going to blow it up. So you see the um, cortical radiate arteries right here. Then they branch towards these little ball-like structures, okay? And so here's that ball-like structure blown up even further. You see this very thick muscular um, vessel right here? That's the afferent arterial. Afferent arterial. Now that's bringing blood into this ball of vessels known as the glomerulus. Glomerulus, okay? Now, if um, fluid doesn't make it out, um, fluid doesn't make it out to become filtrate and it leaves immediately to go back in the bloodstream. It leaves or exits through the efferent arterial. So you see the thicker one bringing it in, afferent arterial, glomerulus, and leaving through the efferent arterial. Okay. Then we have paratubular capillaries, okay, vasa recta and venules. I'm actually going to cover those in a different section because they make more sense once you know the path of filtrate. Okay, so let's skip back to the veins. So veins essentially bring them back in the direct opposite fashion. So we're going to um, bring them back through the cortical radiate, cortical radiate veins. Then when they, so they're up in the cortex, cortical radiate veins. Once they arc over the pyramids, those are the arcuate veins. Then they go back down to the interlobar veins. And there's no segmental veins um, in this model, so, uh, or recognized by this text. Some texts still use segmental veins. This one does not, so it's interlobar vein all the way until you hit the renal vein. Okay, and that's it for this section. All right, guys, so in this specific section, we're going to cover the nephron, which is the functional unit of the kidney, okay? So we're going to hone in on this middle piece because all of these structures are best seen here, mainly. So we start off with uh, the term renal corpuscle, okay? Renal corpuscle is essentially these white balls or dots right here. And the renal corpuscle is a combination of this glomerulus, all that ball of vessels, which is backwards, sorry about that. Glomerulus plus this um, ball that houses the vessels. So that plus that is renal corpuscle. So we just test you on the white ball, thinking that you'll remember that it's this plus this equals this. Renal corpuscle. So going back to this, what is housing the glomerulus? So this is the glomerulus housed in the Bowman's capsule or glomerular capsule. The space within the capsule is the capsular space. Capsular space. And these little specialized cells, you see these little blue cells right here. Those are podocytes, so that's a cell type. Okay. Then that brings us into, remember I was talking about earlier, um, you can push filtrate out. So you push filtrate out of this um, glomerulus into these specific sections of the nephron. So we're going to talk about that. So let's get this and make sure we're good to go here, okay? So, we have a glomerulus right here. Whenever the glomerulus pushes filtrate out, it pushes it directly into the proximal convoluted tubule, no matter if you're left or right, okay? So right here, this glomerulus is pushing it directly into this proximal convoluted tubule. Then that proximal convoluted tubule sends it down to the nephron loop, or the loop of Henle which is broken up into two specific limbs, the descending limb of the nephron loop, bringing it down, ascending limb of the nephron loop, bringing it back up, okay? And that connects it to the distal convoluted tubule, which always, 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 distal convoluted tubule feeds into the collecting duct. So this collecting duct is not considered part of the nephron by many texts. It's its own structure. And where do you think that's bringing it down to? It actually brings it down to the renal papilla, and that sends it into the calluses because that is considered we're done with filtrate. We're starting to make actual urine at that point. Okay, so just to recap real quick, this is confuses most students. The dis, um, distal convoluted tubule always connects into the collecting duct. And the proximal convoluted tubules always come directly off of 
the glomerulus. Okay. Um, something I may have missed is the juxtaglomerular complex, okay, which is a mishmash of um, structures that your TAs will cover in class for you guys. Okay. All right, guys, just to cover a couple of the vessels that I didn't hit the first time, um, now that you know what the nephron looks like, okay? So up next to all of this stuff is some capillary beds up in the cortex. These are the paratubular capillaries, paratubular capillaries. They lie up next to all the glomerulus type stuff. And then way down low, you see these vessels down here, this capillary network down here, which would sit next to nephron loops. Or loops of Henle. This is vasa recta. So vasa recta is down low. Paratubular capillaries are going to be. All right, guys. The last vessel um, to finish up urinary system we have right here. So you can see this. This is actually a better um, view of the um, vasa recta, which you can see surrounding this nephron loop right here. This capillary bed is the vasa recta. Um, dumping back into a cortical radiate vein right here is the venule. So that is our last vessel term right there, venule. And good luck, you guys. That should be it for your urinary system.